I've talked about fear a couple of times now. So fear is an interesting one. Is for people to grow, really, you have to go through fear. So you have something called the comfort zone, where we all live, right? The comfort zone is the stuff that we are happy and comfortable with doing. Okay. Me, for a long time, I didn't like talking to cameras. I didn't like talking in front of people. It wasn't in my comfort zone. To get to the place where I wanted to be able to do that, I had to go through the fear zone. And then go through the fear zone. It's like a, like a rubber band that, that pulls you back. It can pull you back into the comfort zone. You know, you start making excuses. You start to question yourself. You start to think, am I imposter? Do I have imposter syndrome here? And it's perfectly natural to be going through this fear zone. But you go through the fear zone all the time when you make change. Right? That's part of the excitement of being a human. That's exhilarating going through that fear zone. But again, it can also be scary. And that, that rubber band can pull you back into the comfort zone. Particularly that other rubber band pulls the other way. And so you have to go through the learning zone, which is, is learning new skills, new ways of being, new tactics, new strategies to get through that fear zone. And then what happens is once you've learned those things, your comfort zone expands to take in these new challenges, these new concepts, like speaking on stage, running a, a business of 200,000 people. What was once difficult and challenging becomes part of your comfort zone. But any, any ambitious person then looks for, well, what's the next thing? And that's, again, on the other side of the fear. You have to go through the fear zone to expand and to go to the next thing along. And that's really how successful people operate. If they go through the fear zone and they know that growth is on the other side of that. And that it's a rubber band that can propel you through that or it can pull you back into the comfort zone throughout. So it's really truly understanding that you have to go through fear to grow. And that's a natural feeling to have. Approach it, talk to it, understand it. But once you get on the other side of that, oh my God, the possibilities are endless. In your experience, what are some common misconceptions or misunderstandings about the application of psychology and leadership? How can we address these misconceptions along the true potential of psychology in these domains? What I, what I come across all the time with, with leaders is, is, in, is imposter syndrome. And imposter syndrome is often seen as being, it's called a syndrome, it's, it's, it's already got negative connotations to it. I always like to look at these things and help understand, well, is this, a, is this a feature or is this a bug? And once you start seeing it in that way, you can start to understand how to react to these things differently. Similarly, leaders that I work with have ADHD. And again, similarly, is that a feature or is that a bug? These are both non-neurotypical approaches to running businesses. And they are very successful in the modern age to have both of these things. And so it's about understanding the fact that we're all different. And you might read those accounts from folks on LinkedIn about the hustle, about the grind, about how they've made millions and billions. And there are many ways that are successful and you can learn from those people who've been successful. But I always talk about there are as many ways to be successful as there are ways to fail. And so it doesn't have to be the same way for everybody. So a lot of the work that I work on is helping people understand that their own path through leadership, through the particular challenges that they have, be that challenges around imposter syndrome or ADHD or other things that are holding them back. These things are the very things that have been their strength behind before this. I work with a CEO of a 20,000 employee company who, who procrastinates. And for a long time, he's given himself grief about this. And the reality is, as you look at the reason he's procrastinating, is the things that he isn't working on, the stuff he's ignoring, are actually the stuff he shouldn't be working on. The very reason he has procrastination is he's able to prioritize the things that really need to be done. And the things that are weighing down on him are stuff that he can actually hand off to other people. So some of the most common, common misconception I see around psychology and leadership is that emotion is bad, that being different or non-neurotypical is bad. Being um, on the spectrum is bad. It's not. These are actually strengths that can drive really successful people to deliver incredible results in business and in, in, in life if they're embraced. 